Sorry, just my camera started to fall over. So today I am dealing with a nightmare soap situation of I have soap that didn't work out. It ended up being like, I don't know. I don't know exactly what happened, but when I use it, it totally dries my skin out. And so I suspect that there's lye pockets in it. Um, I did a pH test on it, which is how you can tell if, if there's too much lye or if something's lye heavy and it's, you know, pH is fine. It's exactly where soap should be. Um, but yeah, I've, I've tried it a couple times and every time it's just, it's not, it's not good. So I'm rebatching it. I'm, I'm going to grate it down. So here it is. I have a bunch of them in this container and I have some started a little bit just in an attempt to get this video to not be eight hours long. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm going to start with this. I'm going to grate it down. I'm going to turn it into batter. And then I already did a batch of this before. And then it, I'm going to whip it so it floats. And then they end up looking like this when they're done. So, I mean, obviously I like these better. This is one of my favorite soaps that I've done with like the pink moons in it. But this is usable. So this has more value. <laughs> um, yeah, so, you know, this this is called rebatching or French milling. And it's the one nice thing about doing the homemade soap is that, you know, worst case scenario, you mess up your soap. You can still do this. You can s still salvage your soap. It's not like a complete loss. It's just it's a lot of work. This isn't necessarily <laughs> what I wanted to be doing with the soap. And also you're kind of limited in what it looks like, you know, especially like with the soap being like a super dark black, there's only so much I can do with the color of it. So gray or black is kind of my, my options for what this final soap is. Um, yeah, so the very first step that you want to do to rebatch your soap is you want to take your soap and get a grater and you want to grate it up. Um, you want to do this instead of just chopping it into pieces because the smaller the pieces are, the easier and the faster it's going to melt down. And that's, that's basically what you're doing. It's, the soap will actually kind of... It's not that it dissolves. It's almost like like a wax, like a candle. It'll it'll go from being like this hard form to you know a more liquid form. It doesn't look exactly like what like it looks like when when you have the you know the cold process soap batter where that almost it looks like a pudding when you're working with it. This I don't know. It, it, it gets weird. I, I have some that's been cooking for 20 minutes so that, that like I have some like pre-melting but I'm gonna grate this up and then we'll throw it in there and I can kind of show you what it looks like when it's melted down. Um, the recipe that I'm following for how to rebatch says you can add up to nine ounces of liquid per pound. I have two pounds here and I added I added 12 ounces of liquid uh, just because I want to start there and then kind of see I don't want it they say you should add it slowly because you basically you don't want it to turn to soup um, and you're not supposed to add oils to it because in theory your soap is already good but my soap sucks and it dries my skin out so I'm adding oils I'm adding a lot of oil this is this is my pre weighed out oils. Sorry, just one second. Leah, I'm just doing the video. Yeah, I'm cooking down the soap. I'm making more floating soap for you. You have to take your nap though. Yeah, I'm making a soap making video. My daughter's napping. <laughs> She's, what are you talking about? Who are you talking to? <laughs> um, yeah, so oils. You're not supposed to add oils to it, because, but I'm adding oils to this because the soap was drying my skin out. And so I'm adding a ton of oil because I want it to be moisturizing. And in the batch that I did before, I added five ounces to start. And then as I, 
as I worked with it, I, I decided I wanted a little bit more oil in it, so I, I didn't weigh it. I just poured, you know, like a glug glug in. And and it was fine, but I still felt like the the final product, like this this final soap here, could have a little bit more oil in it, just for, for my skin. My skin's crazy dry. So part of the reason why I was excited about learning to make homemade soap myself was that I can make this super nice, super moisturizing, no bad, you know, allergens, anything with a fragrance in like a soap, even shampoos. I have to be careful what shampoo I use because the, the skin and my scalp isn't super sensitive to the fragrances, but as I rinse the shampoo out of my hair, it'll like go down my back and I'll get like a rash on my back from the fragrances in the, in the shampoo. So. I definitely, I like the idea of homemade soap because then I can make it exactly perfectly for me. Um, but yes, this soap was not, <laughs> definitely not perfect for me. So it needs oil in it. <laughs> yeah, so I have, I have eight ounces measured out there and that's what I'm gonna be added in. Um, this soap was a, a, a vegetable based soap. Um, there's a lot of olive oil. I have a bunch of canola oil in this recipe. This is the, the recipe that I made up myself. The one that I'm definitely not going to recommend that people try because it did not work out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so because this is mainly a vegetable based soap, they said that it's good to put milk in it as your liquid for rebatching. So I have like a cup and a half of milk in my crock pot. But they said if you have an animal based soap, that you should make sure to do uh, water. It, like if it's a lard or a tallow, that kind of thing, it, that works out better with a, a water when you rebatch. One nice thing about rebatching too, is I found that my cold process soaps, they've been really losing the scent, like the essential oils don't stick in them. The lye kind of just eats up any, any of the essential oils that's what I don't want to do. I don't want to grate my fingers off. <laughs> That's why I'm not looking at the looking at the screen very much here. Um, yeah, the essential oils have been just kind of cooking off as as the soap cures and sits. So it'll start off with like you know an ounce and a half even of of essential oils in my three pound batches of soap, and then by the end it's just this super faint scent, which for me is frustrating because. I don't buy essential oils, so for me, buying essential oils was like, oh, it's so much money. <laughs> like I spent like $100 on essential oils and that was going to be enough to do, you know, like 15, 10 to 15 batches of soap. So that's, that's a very expensive scent to be adding into a soap for it to not even really stick around. Um, but when you do the rebatching, the soap, it, uh, you know, it's already soap. There's, there's no lye to eat off your essential oils. So when I did this, I put some orange in there and this already is scented with a pine and I kind of can smell the pine like as I cook it and grate it. But this, I can, I can definitely smell the scents that are in here still. So that is, you know, that is a perk to the, the, you know, French milling rebatching. If you, you know, you could just make plain white, unscented, simple soap. And then, you know, if you wanted it to be super moisturizing, you can add in a cup of oil and you want a strong scent, you can add it in then. Um, I'm just, I'm not convinced it's worth the labor. <laughs> you know, that it does, as you can see, this is me. This is, this was like, I already graded most of this. I spent about a half an hour grading before I, I did this video because I didn't want to be sitting here grading all this. Um, but yeah takes a long time. And then when I made the other soap, I'm doing this on a little bit of a hotter temperature because I don't want this video to go for longer than an hour. Um, but yeah, when, when I did this before, I had it on the lowest temperature in my crock pot and it, I cooked it for about three hours just cause I wanted it to be really, really well cooked. I don't think I needed to cook it for that long. But yeah, so I'm upping the temperature a little bit and I'm, I'm thinking it's gonna take an hour, but 
Yes, this is one of those things that can just kind of sit for a while. Okay, I'm going to show you guys what I got going on in the crock pot here. So this is the soap and the milk, the grated soap, and you can see it's kind of been cooking for a little bit. Um, the foaminess to it, this isn't like a hot process soap. This isn't that, you know, it's starting to, you know, have the lye do anything. It's just, it's foamy from me stirring it and it getting like soap bubbles. My hand's kind of messing it up there. Uh, yeah, so you can see this This has more liquid than it should. This is really soupy in here. Um, but I did that because I knew I was going to be adding the rest of this. Okay, sorry, I have to put this down. I have to get my, my two hands. Um, so when you first put it in, like that's it getting, you know, I'd say that's probably about half cooked down at this point. Um, but when you first put this in, it, you know, it kind of has to melt into the liquid to start. Okay, here, I'll show you guys the pot again. Um, you know, like when it first starts, the liquid was kind of just on the bottom and then it, you know, it slowly melts down. Um, you know, this is going to be a lot chunkier as I stir this all in. But... Yeah, I I have to admit, like doing this the first time, I was I was really shocked because I was I was pretty sad about having the soap that was you know wrecked basically, and I've seen like rebatched oop flicking this everywhere. I've seen rebatched soap that people have done, and you know it's always like this weird brown color because it's usually just a mix of random things, um, and people you know like. You can't do the same stuff that you do with the cold process where it looks all fancy. But it, the soap was really nice when I went to use it. So for that, I definitely see there being value in doing the rebatch. Um, it just takes so long. Okay, I'm going to add the oil in now because you can see it's pretty thick and I definitely want it thinner. But like this is a cup of stuff. So this is going to make a big difference. I know this seems like a crazy amount. Like you definitely don't want to put a cup of oil into two pounds of rebatched soap normally. This is like a pretty extreme case of my soap being lye heavy and then also me just liking oily soap. You know, the more, the more, now that I've started to try out the, the cold process soaps that I've been making, um, I'm realizing that I like a really heavy super fat. So lots of homemade soap, people only do like a 5% super fat. And that's like the, you know, the oils that are going to be left in the soap after, after everything's been saponified. Um, but personally, I, I like almost like a 20, like a 15, 20%. I have one that's like a 15% that I've been trying and I'm like, oh, this is pretty good, but could be a little oilier. But I just, you know, I have dry skin. It's all, it's all relative. I also, like I said, last time when I added this oil, I didn't do it um, all at once. And I actually was testing the... I was testing the soap as I made it to to make sure that it was still going to be sudsy. Like I, you don't want to put so much oil in that it basically makes it so your soap doesn't work anymore. But this kind of like eight ounces, I think, is going to be the perfect, you know, perfect still moisturizing, still is going to bubble up. But yeah, so you can kind of see all those chunks in there. You just kind of have to let this cook and melt those chunks for a bit. So that's, that is the, <laughs> that's the thing that's going to take a long time. Um, I was going to maybe show you guys some of my, some of my other soaps that I've had going so far. I was going to show you too what I, what I ended up doing with, with these whipped ones that I made. Um, you know, I, I did a bunch of these hearts cause they, they look nice and I like the size of this mold. It's nice like in the hand for like using 
but I poured like whatever was left into my my bar mold and it was this thick so it wasn't like super thick in the container so I cut like a single bar but then I realized that I could uh I could cut it into these like tiny little pieces because my kids are they love having stuff in the bath to play with they want to just have the soap in the bath they don't want to like just wash with it and then put it back so they could take one of these and melt an entire bar in a single bath, which is is not ideal. <laughs> That's too much soap. <laughs> um, but so I, I cut that whole bar up into a bunch of these little bits. So now when they take a bath, they each get their like little piece of soap and it floats on, on the top of the bath, which is super fun. Here, I'm going to get some water so I can show you guys how these float. Okay, here we go. Let's get this up for the camera. So drop it in there and you can see it there. It's floating, floating on the surface. They float super good. Um, and then so when they have the soap in there with them, it, it floats and they can find it. They don't like lose it and get it stuck to the bottom of the bathtub. And I'll show you guys too. So this, like I said, like I put a ton of, ton of the oil in there. But just gotta get it to melt a little bit. Show you the the sudsing up that it still does. You know, it's like kind of like a creamy lather, but you kind of see it's still still bubbling up. It's still washing, and uh, yeah, I find that this is just like really nice. Nice and moisturizing, so when I'm doing all the the stuff, like washing my hands eight times a day with the garden. See, there you go. Get some more water in there and get some. You can see it still like makes bubbles. It's not just, you know, like a cream. But yeah, so this soap actually, I'm I'm happy with it. So it's not a complete loss. Um, I am, I'm trying to figure out what it is that went wrong with my soap still. I know like, so, so I've started to use some of them. Um, and it's the first few that I made are, are great. They've been, they've been great soap here. I'll grab them to show you guys. basket of <laughs> my soaps to to show oh this is a nightmare I'll tell you guys about that too yeah so what do I have in here oh I guess I have them in the back but yeah so I have this the first bar of soap that I made was uh, look at these these are great I still love these <laughs> um, yeah, so I made like just a plain soap and uh, yeah, and, and it was great. I tried it. It's it's super moisturizing. Like it's it's nice. Like I'm really happy to use it. It's unscented. So my husband's super excited about that too. And then I have my second batch that I made, which was pink. And then they had like little heart embeds in it. And that soap's really nice too. It's it, I've been using it in the shower. It's been like a really great soap. But then this was the third soap. So this was like the next one that came up to try. And so it was totally drying my skin out. And I, I don't know what it is that was bad about this soap. I'm making the assumption that what happened is I didn't fully dissolve the lye when I made my my lye to add into my oils. Um, so I think that I still had undissolved lye crystals inside the soap. So that's why like when I pH test it, it was fine. Like it 
didn't have any issues, but when I went to go use it, it was like really drying on the skin because, you know, the soap on the top, the pH is fine because it's, it's fine, but then you get a pocket and then you're basically rubbing like a crystal of, of lye all over your skin, like drying out and, and hurting your skin, but not so much necessarily because it's like, you know, a, a grain of salt to, uh, to like, you know, burn you basically. Um, the, the one thing though is like this, this is a recipe that I made up myself. I, I used a lie calculator, so there shouldn't have been any issue about if the, if the, I had too much lie in it, but my scale was having some, some issues. Like my scale needed new batteries. So there's a chance that it could just have had a little bit too much lie in it anyways because the scale wasn't 100% accurate um but so that's one of the issues but then the other thing is so after this recipe the next bar of soap I did was this soap and this is the same recipe and so now I'm like checking everything super closely and all of my soaps have like little dots in them, which would be what the live pockets would look like. And they'd show up like, especially in a dark soap like this, like in, in the black soap, the, the little spots that I think are the, are the pockets like show up. They're quite white against the black. Um, and so I have stuff like that in this one too, but I also, I've been having issues with getting bubbles in, in all my soap anyways. So bubbles would look exactly the same. Like they'd look like these pockets. And also this black soap was the first soap that I used salt in. And so people like you add up to a teaspoon of salt per pound of oils. And if you do that, then it can make your soap harder. Cause my first couple soaps, I had a hard time unmolding them cause the soap was so soft. So people were like, oh, add salt. So when I see these little pockets with like something shiny inside of it, it could be the salt as likely as the lye undissolved because I think also that like I haven't necessarily been stirring my salt in really well. So on this soap and it's, you know, like even on this soap or like here's, this is the Castile soap that I did, which is the one before this, I can look at it and I can see these little pockets and, and like I've, you know, like I have one right there. The light is really bad and this camera isn't the best. It's, okay, I, oh, my cat's coming. I don't know if you can see that, just right there. It's like a little bit lighter. I know what I'm looking for so I can see it on the screen there. But that that's basically, okay, sorry guys, my cat is being a jerk. Here, look at this. Um, yeah, so that is what I see in all of these soaps, but I, I don't know for sure that I have issues with all my soaps. You know, like if, if I have like these lie pockets, if I have this, the soap that's potentially like dangerous, I don't, I don't really want to like give it away to anyone. You know, it's one thing for, for me to use it and, and know what I'm dealing with. But yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm really concerned about all of my soaps at this point. So I've started trying them. Um, but yeah, so I, was, I tried this one and it looks the same as the black soap, it has these same pockets and things. But when I use this, it didn't dry my skin out. I didn't have any issues with it. And this is the exact same recipe. This is my same like homemade recipe. Um, though I do think I changed the batteries between these two batches. So I don't know. I don't know if I've been like failing completely at soap making. I, I laughed because uh, I have a video that I have to put up about the, the next batch of soap because the last video, yeah, I, someone's asking if I use a stick blender to make the soap. Uh, <laughs> I use the the stick blender to make the, the cold process soap or else I'd be stirring it for 800 years and ain't nobody got time for that. Um, but for the, the rebatching, you just, you stir it with a spoon and the last rebatch, I did, I, I broke my spoon, so now I'm just stirring it with a stick. <laughs> um, but what was I saying? Yeah, I don't know. Basically, so I started trying my soaps and I haven't had them dry out my skin the same way this soap dried out my skin. Um, so yeah, 
I don't know. I don't know 100% what's going on. If anyone knows, please let me know. <laughs> if anyone has any ideas. Um, yeah, because I, I don't want to rebatch all of my soap because, like I said, the first time I did this, this took, like, for hours. And, like, even today, I've graded for 45 minutes to do two pounds of soap. So I definitely do not want to be doing that all the time. You know what? This is this is thickening up. I'm gonna add some more some more liquid in here because this is thickening up more than I want it to. And this is kind of the recommendation. So if for for people who weren't here at the beginning, this recipe they say um, you can use up to nine ounces of liquid per pound of soap that you're rebatching, and I'm doing two batches. And I threw in 12 ounces of milk. Um, but it like, it all just, it depends on the soap, right? It depends on how dry the soap is. It depends on how it's reacting. So you, what you want to do is you want to slowly add it kind of like what I'm doing here because you don't want it to turn to soup. You want it to be, you know, liquid, but you, you basically, you have to dry out whatever liquid you put into this. So if you turn it to soup, it will eventually go back to like bar soap but it might take you like two months of it sitting there. And if you don't get it overly, overly um, wet, you can actually unmold this like after a day. So that's good. <laughs> uh, someone's asking if you can make shampoo. Um, so that you can, the lye soap makes a hard like a bar soap um liquid soaps like uh like a you know a liquid castile soap like the dr bronner's or like the dish soap that you use or shampoo those soaps are all going to be made usually well I, I don't know if you're going to make it at home i don't know how they do it in the factories or whatever but if you do it at home you don't use uh lye you use and now I'm trying to think of what it is called. One of them, it's like sodium hydroxide versus, you know, the other one. Basically, the one that you could like make yourself out of like wood ash, that isn't lye. It's, it's a different, it's a different uh, chemical. And that's the type of chemical that you use to process your oils into a liquid soap. So if, if you wanted to make shampoo with lye, you'd make like a shampoo bar. You'd, you wouldn't make like a liquid shampoo. Um, but you can also, people will take the, take the bar soap and then add, oh yeah, someone's in the uh, potassium hydroxide is, is the, the other one. I've, I'm forgetting what people refer to it as is the common name too. But yeah, I think one of them's like sodium hydroxide and then potassium hydroxide. Um, yeah, but yeah, so if you wanted to make like liquid hand soap, you can use like a lye soap. You can take like a bar of soap and you grate it. And I, most recipes call for like one bar of soap to one gallon of water. Yeah, potash. Thank you. Someone, <laughs> someone just answered my question. <laughs> Potash versus lye. <laughs> um, yeah. So if you wanted to make a liquid hand soap out of this, you just, you grate up like what we did here and then you heat up the water and you dissolve the, the bar soap into that and it makes uh, like a hand soap. And, but it's kind of weird. It's not like the hand soap that you like buy in the bottle. It's, it's kind of snotty. People like call it like snope so soap snot. Cause it's like, it's like this weird stringy and it rubs nicely into your hands. But I tried making some to be like bath, um, uh, like bubble bath for the kids. And if I pour it into the bath, it just like, it kind of like sits. <laughs> and doesn't really dissolve in the bath and then just turns the bath like this weird milky color. So it's, it's not necessarily something that you want, like you wouldn't want to put that in your hair. Like you'd be better off just using the bar soap because the, you, you rub it on your hands and you get the lather and then the lather you actually rub in is, is how you'd, you'd use bar soap as a shampoo. 
Um, but yeah, people will also make make soap like this for then washing their clothes. Um, they just like they grate it and then they add you know like water softeners to it and then make make like a laundry detergent out of that. But the issue with that, like I'm not gonna do that because um, soap like people always talk about it like oh it works great but um modern washing machines are designed to be washed with detergent and when when you use soap like that you need a lot more agitation than what like a modern washing machine is going to give it so it it can cause issues in the long run lots of people don't have issues using it in the long run um but I'm washing kids' clothes and things like that. It's <laughs> my clothes are very dirty, so I definitely don't want to don't want to take the risk. I'm I'm happy to stick with detergent. Sorry, guys, just one second. My daughter's yelling. What's going on, Leah? Listen, you need to take a nap. Okay. No, you didn't. I've heard you kicking the whole time. You have to at least have a little bit more of a quiet time. Okay, give me one second here, guys. Uh, sorry about that. Yeah, I'm making I'm making more of the floating soap. I want you to make a snowflake one. A snowflake one. Yeah. Okay, sure. I don't have a snowflake mold. That's not gonna happen. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll let you guys know about this nightmare soap that I made. Uh, I, I have a video that I'm working on to, to put out, but... So I made... I tried to make a milk soap because the last soap video I put out was about this one, and I, you know, I risked the wrath of the soap gods, and I was like, oh, perfect soap! Oh, look, I'm like, oh, no big deal. I'm so pro at soap making. And yeah, so of course, the next soap I go to make, everything goes wrong. That's like when I found out about like this, this lie issue too, and needing to like rebatch it. So yes, never say that you made perfect soap because you know, you're going to eat your foot as soon as, as soon as those words come out of your, come out of your mouth. Um, but yeah, so I went to make a milk soap, and and my, like, my, so what you do to make a milk soap is you use milk instead of water for making your lye, your lye fluid to add into the oils, and milk can burn, because basically the lye just crazy heats up, it, like, that's, that's the reason why you don't want to get it on your skin, it, it burns, basically. Um, so, like, it, it heats up the water, too. And so when you put it into the milk, you have to put it in really slowly and really carefully and like freeze your milk first so that it won't burn the milk. It like, it can scorch it and like burn all the fats and the sugars in there. Um, so I added it and super careful and I didn't think that it burnt, but the, the milk separated. It kind of looked like it was turning into like cheese, like when like curds and whey separate. Um, so I didn't exactly know what was going on there, but I, <clears throat> I use that liquid anyways, but I, I changed my recipe and cause I, I want to find a recipe that has a lot of canola oil in it because all of these soaps have been really expensive to make and, uh, here up in Canada, like canola oil is super cheap, but most other oils are, are quite pricey. So to make like you know, three pounds worth of oils into soap, it you know, brings the price of the per bar up kind of high. But canola oil, if I could find like a soap that has a bunch of that, it'd be really affordable soap. Um, yeah, so I, I made up a recipe, <coughs> sorry guys, with a bunch of canola, but you're supposed, like people don't like it because you can, this the canola oil goes bad and then you get something called like DOS, which is dreaded orange spots. I always thought uh, the DOS stood for dots of shame, which also also kind of is a good definition of what they are. But th so this is like a bar of that soap and it did, you can kind of see one there, but the camera's bad. But yeah, so I got these dreaded orange spots on, on some of the soap that I made 
And that's just like the soap, like they usually say it's the oils going rancid is, is what the, the DOS is caused from. Yeah. So this soap was a nightmare because the milk and everything separated and I got the dreaded orange spots. Uh, you know, someone's asking if I know why the milk separated. Um, I, I honestly, I, I don't know why. If you, Cause if you add the lye in super slowly to the milk so that it doesn't heat up, it's, it's not supposed to separate. And I went and looked it up and people, no one was saying that it's going to curdle, but, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it, to me, having made like curds and whey before, it made sense that it would curdle because to do the curds and whey, you add like an acid to the, the milk. So to me, it would make sense that throwing off the pH on the opposite side of making it like super, super basic instead of super acidic would cause like curds and whey. But no one's, no one said that was a thing on, on the internet. So there is one thing that I did see that would explain what happened without it having actually burnt. Um, would be that your the lye will start saponifying the fats because I didn't use goat's milk like goat's milk is really common because it's low in fat um, but I I just used like a normal like high fat milk so it could have been that it was it was just turning to like milk soap basically and and that was the issue okay this is getting close show you guys there so you can see that it's like pretty liquidy but then you can see some of those dark spots in there that's the bits that just haven't melted yet um probably gonna give this another 10 minutes and then i'm gonna i'm gonna whip it but this is this is melting down pretty pretty quickly Yeah, so pretty, it's, it's been a discouraging two weeks for, for soap making for me because I felt like I was progressing pretty nicely. I was like, okay, I'm doing a good job. Like the soaps are getting progressively nicer looking. I'm ready to like go into some more complicated recipes because when you start working with like milks or adding sugars or different, different additives, then that makes it a little bit more difficult for the soap to like turn out perfectly because you add sugars and it can overheat and burn and you know, the milk's the same thing. Like it, it has the sugars and everything in it, but there's a reason that you want to add all those additives. Like they feel nice on the skin. Um, so I, I was like, yay, doing good, learning so great. And then everything sucks, everything fails. So I don't know. I think that the next batch of soap that I want to make just as like a bit of a reset for myself as I want to try to do a hot process soap, especially cause like I've been working with the rebatching doing this. And so I have like a little bit of an idea like working with the crock pot, you know, like I, and I'm feeling more comfortable with the soap batter from doing the cold process. One of the, one of the scary things about doing hot process soap is, um, the heat causes the lye to, to react with the, the oils and then it, it bubbles up. With the cold process, it, it doesn't really cause this like heat reaction. Um, it just slowly over time, the lye saponifies all the oils. And, and that's why you like, you need to cure it for like a couple, like for the six weeks it needs a couple weeks to saponify and then a couple weeks for all the moisture to come out. But when you do a hot process, like, you know, you cook it, like it takes about an hour and then when it's done, it's done. Um, so you, it's a little bit more of a dangerous chemical reaction that you're working with than the, than the cold process. So sorry, one second. Yeah. Okay. Sorry guys. <laughs> I'm on toddler duty right now. <laughs>
Okay, sorry guys. <laughs> um, yeah, hot process. Can be dangerous. You can have soap batter that is like lye. It has lye in it still, and then it's also like hot, like boiling hot oils that can bubble up and do something called a volcano, which then spills everywhere and makes a big huge soap mess. So you don't necessarily want to have one of those. So it's, to me personally, it, it, the idea has been a little bit intimidating, but I, I think I'm gonna try that for my next batch of soap, just to, to try something different. And then obviously, because I'm now all paranoid about dissolving my lye, I wanna be really, really careful that I'm checking everything really clearly. I've been doing the soap making at night. I've been, you know, like the middle of the night when the kids are in bed. Um, so, and then I have these like goggles that like have like a yellow tone that I've been wearing for working with the lye. So there's, there's a chance that I'm just, I'm not clearly seeing what, what I'm working with. So I might want to make my, my lye liquid and like dissolve the lye into the water during the day when I can, you know, I can get a clear look at it. I should probably finally buy a pair of proper goggles because yeah, if, if I'm gonna make all this soap, you know, I'm already drowning in soap. I already have something like, because every batch makes like 15 bars of soap and I've done like six, I think. So it's like, there's, there's a lot of soap adding up. And if it ends up being soap that I like, don't even feel comfortable giving away, it's, it's gonna become like a serious, like soap storage nightmare situation very, very quickly because I like personally I use like two or three bars of soap a year I don't like like use the soap to wash I have like a like a puff thing that I just like rub a bit of soap on that and then wash with that so yeah like a bar and then yeah, I don't shower every day I'm like every couple days for a shower so yeah like it, I don't know the soap would the soap would definitely go bad before I could use it all if if I can't give this away. My, my like long-term plan for why I could make a bunch of batches to learn how to make soap was that worst case scenario, if I had nothing to do with it, Christmas would roll around and it would still be like, you know, totally shelf stable by Christmas. It would be like all cured and then I could just give it away. That could be like my Christmas gifts, but I don't want to rebatch. I don't want to rebatch everything and then this be my Christmas soap, you know? Like, yeah, not bad. It's like cute little heart, but like this, this is like, obviously everyone wants this. This is the gift people say thank you for. This is the gift people are like, yeah, okay. I, the thought that counts, but this is starting to look better. Here, I'm going to show you guys the batter again. It's starting to kind of like heat up pretty evenly too. Um, you can kind of see the color is getting closer to this, this, oh, sorry guys. So the color is getting pretty close to what it looked like last time. And, and the bits are not quite as obvious. It's fluffing up a little bit because there's like, as I stir it, I'm, I'm getting all the, all the air into it the same way that the, when I whip it, it's going to work out. Um, and I did, I threw that cup of oil in here. So, you know, I'm, I'm not too concerned about it, about it being a little bit of bits that could potentially have, have those little lie pockets in it. Um, yeah, so this, and to give you guys context, I know we're at like 40 minutes here in the video, but I did start this ahead of the video. So this is on high in my in my crock pot but my crock pot like is, the temperature isn't right on it high on on my crock pots probably like medium on a normal crock pot um it's uh yeah so it's been on that for an hour now with two pounds of soap so like i know that i i said at the beginning that when i made the other rebatch i did uh it took me i let it just kind of slowly it was on low and it just kind of did its thing and I had it cooking for about three hours, but on this temperature here at an hour, it's looking pretty similar. So, you know, like, 
there's a little bit of a leeway if you want but you want to be stirring it more if you're doing like a hot temperature like this um when i had it on the low i kind of i left it for an hour before i even looked at it and you know so you know <laughs> base base what you want to do for rebatching or french milling on uh, how how much you want to be paying attention to your personal <laughs> to your personal soap um yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's going to get any any more melted without it taking like an hour. And I'm not going to do that. I don't have time for that today. Do do any of you guys that are that are here hanging out, do any of you guys have any questions about what I'm doing? I don't know if you're if you're here because of, you know, just me <laughs> doing my weekly live video or if anyone's here specifically about rebatching soap. Um, I was also going to give a little bit of an update on, on the garden and the update is I haven't done anything. <laughs> um, the weather has actually started to get pretty nice here. The snow is almost completely melted off, off the garden. So I am getting ready to do some stuff. I've been doing a bit of a clean up in the greenhouse because I want to set up the greenhouse to do um to do starts in there but we're still like at this point the weather is getting nicer but we're still we're freezing overnight every night so i can't have anything out in the greenhouse because it's just it you know it's just like a tunnel um but yeah but so what i want to do is i want to get some starts started so i have some stuff that needs to get started like you know a bit ahead of time because i don't really plant everything out here until mid-may end of may but I'm probably gonna wanna get my peppers started next week and maybe my eggplants. I wanna give those as much of a, of a head start as I can. And then probably like a week or two after that, I'll then start my tomatoes. But next week, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be starting some cold weather crops. I think that it's not warm enough outside because like we just had the snow melt off and there's still spots in the garden where the ground is like frozen solid, but I think that in the greenhouse especially, it's sheltered enough that if I can get them to germinate and then transplant like cold weather crops that they should be able to to survive okay in the greenhouse. So I'm hoping to, to get a bunch of stuff started, plant out the greenhouse, and then maybe even do some experiments of having stuff in the garden. This is way earlier than we've ever planted stuff into the garden, but Ian and I are, we're pretty interested in trying to add extra seasons on. And then because we're doing, you know, we're doing the trying to grow as much as possible this year. And then also because we want to be like donating a bunch of stuff. Like normally we wouldn't plant like, you know, a hundred square feet of lettuce because we hate lettuce and we don't want to eat any of it. Um, but so if I plant it out to do the experiment, it doesn't really matter so much because I can just, I can just donate away whatever we're not going to eat. You know, I have the $700 worth of seeds just sitting there waiting. And we were pretty disappointed that our fall, we did like this big fall winter garden and and then the, the birds came and ate it all. So I'm still like pretty bummed <laughs> that we didn't get to try that, give that like a proper experiment. So it'll be interesting basically to do the same thing again, but you know, trying to, trying to get it to work. Someone's asking if I have any crops that grow through the winter. And right now we have like the gardens full of kale. We have a kale plant that can survive without doing any sort of like, you know, winter protection to it. It's called a uh, winter boar kale. And it will actually grow even <laughs> like over the winter, but it grows super, super slowly. And then what happens is at this time, like the weather hits basically it'll keep all the plants that have grown we won't pick it in the fall and any of the leaves that are on there will survive and so we can pick it off in the winter so it's basically like refrigerated kale just waiting for us and then right now once the weather kind of does that first little bit of a warm up um you know like when the spring bulbs are popping out it then starts going crazy and it starts growing a ton and then we usually get like a month or two of really good growth on it and 
one of the few pests that we have in our garden is aphids and aphids just love anything in the brassica family and and kale obviously is <laughs> is one of their favorites so we don't like to have kale in the garden over the summer because it just it it's nasty it's gross like i don't like kale even at the best of times and i definitely don't like kale that's like coated in aphids i'm not gonna bother with it so the overwintering kale works really good because when it grows right now and and then we get this big flush of of kale then it doesn't have any of the aphids the aphids haven't started yet and then by the time the aphids would be starting it, the kale's getting pulled out of the garden so it, it doesn't it works for our pest cycle really well that way um, but I, like, I also, I found some carrots in the garden that I had no idea were in there <laughs> that overwintered. And I actually had some beets that just weren't big enough for me to, to pull them out. And they overwintered too, which like is surprising because I, I, they're not supposed to. About half of them are like soggy, like they got frozen and died. Um, and then we also, we have a few turnips that overwintered, but that, that's stuff that like was just kind of like luck luck of the draw the kale something that keeps every year but next year we want to get polytunnels like a low tunnel um which is just like a little bit of an insulating on the beds and if we do that there's a lot of crops that we'd be able to keep um over winter no problem for the zone that we're in we're in like zone six and then we usually get snow in Kelowna for like when it's really cold and the snow makes like a crazy difference for how well things can keep in the ground. Um, but yeah, so that's our plan for next winter. But you know, that's, that's way, way, way from now. Someone saying that their beets suck in the summer. We, I, our boots, beets do great. Beets are actually one of the crops that, that does really well for us. Um, but we were hot and dry, so I know that, I, I don't know where you are specifically, but I know that, you know, nothing likes to be soggy, like when it's, when it's a root crop, can make it, make it hard. I used to live in, on an island, like a coastal island, and I had the worst time trying to grow things. I, I could never figure it out. Everything just wanted to be sad. The only thing you could grow was lettuce. And I don't like lettuce. So <laughs> that made me sad. Oh, Australia. Ugh, now you're just making me jealous. Because I know that you guys have your tomatoes right now. And I don't have any tomatoes. Uh, Australia is interesting to me, too. Because, you know, depending on if you're in the north of the island or the south of the island the the seasons are so different you know you kind of get those oh yeah that's a nice tower you get those canadian style extremes like i'm lucky because i'm in like southern canada so i can still actually grow things but then it's uh you get to northern canada and the weather's just like crazy how different it is Whereas, you know, sometimes, I mean, I, I guess it's the same for Southern United States versus Northern United States. Those, those latitudes or, I don't know, makes a difference where you are, obviously. <laughs> okay, so this is melted pretty good. I'm going to get my beaters. I better clear some space too. This is the fun part. So this like, so what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be whipping the soap. And this is something that you can do with cold process soap, too. Um, I might need those, Leah, just so you know. So, but people usually whip their oils before they add in their, their, uh, their lye when you do, like, a whipped cold process soap. Whereas with this, like, rebatching, you just, you whip it at, at the very end. Okay, it's a little hot, but I have, I have glass table, so it should be fine. Okay, Leah, listen, what I'm doing here is hot, so I don't want you coming over here. It's not too bad, because it's a crock pot. Okay. Let's show you what this kind of looks like here. Sorry, it's hard to get the camera. There we go. Um, yeah, so you can see, like, it's, it's kind of the this weird texture, but... It's a little bit like floaty. I don't know, almost like over whipped 
like like Cool Whip maybe is like the consistency of it. But you can see that there's not very many, many bits in there. Like there's still a little bit, but I don't know. It just, it doesn't fully melt. But yeah, so at this point it's, uh, you know, it's, it's workable. I could pour this out and, and wouldn't make too bad of a bar. It'd actually flatten out. Not too bad, but I'm gonna whip it because I'm gonna make the floating, so. Just grabbing my beaters here. Okay, this is my eight million year old beater. I found this on the side of the road a decade ago. So it's definitely, I've gotten my money's worth on this one. So I don't mind throwing it into soap. Though, I mean, this, this is metal, so this isn't, this isn't like the molds. Like any of these molds, you don't want to use it after, after doing the, the soap, just because they're going to stink. You know, you try to, try to cook something and it tastes, tastes like essential oil soap taste. Um, so this is quite hot, so I'm going to beat it first, and then I have some, some orange essential oil that I'm going to add in here. Um, but if you put it in when it's hot, the, the essential oils can kind of burn, burn off, and then your house smells really strong, and it doesn't smell like anything in your soap. Okay, it's gonna maybe get a little bit loud here, but I'm gonna show you the beating. So it takes a little bit of time to do this, just because... You know, it's kind of sludgy, but you can kind of, I don't know if the light is good enough on the camera, but I, I can see that the color is changing a little bit as I whip it. And, oh, there we go. Okay, I'm going to need two hands for this. Sorry, guys. My, like I said, my beater is 8 million years old. Hey guys, sorry about that. It looks like the internet just just crashed out on me there. Um, it, I'm hoping that it's back. I, I hope it wasn't off for a while. Uh, yeah, so what I'm saying is this takes a little bit to beat up just because it's so thick to beat it. Um, but you can start to see a difference. The color changes as more air gets added to it. And it also, you know, gets fluffy. It gets fluffy like if you're beating like a whipping whipping cream. Um, it also like breaks up any of those little bits. But this is proof of how frugal I am. The fact that this is like the beater that I own. Because I'm like, oh it's fine. I just like need two hands to like hold it together. If I baked more, maybe I could justify. The only thing this ever gets used for is like making whipping cream to go with pumpkin pie over the holiday season. So. Okay, the color's really changing here. Let's plug this in and show you guys. I don't know. You can see how much it's whipped up here. You know, it kind of started off being this like weird sludgy. But now it's getting like a lot smoother as the as the air is getting whipped in there and the beaters are kind of breaking down any of the any of the little bits that were in there. I'm liking the color though. This is making like this really kind of creamy, creamy gray color. It's funny because, you know, like as I'm making this, this this color is way lighter than the color that the that the other batch that I did was. I anticipate it will darken a little bit as it dries out, because I think part of what is going on for it getting so light is that all the liquid that is inside the the like the soap batter here is kind of getting like a little bit foamed up as it's getting beaten together. So you know like when when you wash, wash your hands, the suds, doesn't matter what color the soap is, the suds are like a white color. 
the same kind of idea for it getting this light, light color. My hope too is like as I'm whipping this that this is this is gonna cool it down because I do want to add in this this orange essential oil. So getting the air in there should cool it down a bit faster. Um, when when I saw recipes for how long to beat it for. I don't remember there being like any, any like, oh, whip it for this long. You know, it's just kind of like whipping cream, like do it until it's looking like it's the proper texture. And honestly, like, I don't think you'd have to do a lot of beading for this soap to be able to float. I don't think it's like, oh, it's only gonna float if it's, you know, been beat until it's, you know, three times the original size. Um, the, the soap actually floats pretty easily, but this, this looks like it's probably not quite doubled in size into the, into the container here. So it's getting, it's obviously cooling down cause it's not, it's not being as smooth. So this is probably the point at which. I want to put in my essential oil. I'm going to turn this off for a second. Um, probably not a bad idea to actually measure your essential oils when doing this because this isn't like when you put it into like a soap batter. Like you want to be a little bit more cautious about percentages. But I'm just going to put a splash of this. I just want it to have a little bit of like a sweet. This is this is orange oil too. I just want it to have a little bit of a sweetness to it and and I find like the citrus once it uh once it kind of gets in there and then airs out a little bit the only like the that citrusy smell doesn't doesn't last super well for for in my soaps but it keeps kind of that sweet sweet smell of like orange fruit to it okay. oh look this beater you know, it's one of those things, it's not until you do something with someone watching that you realize maybe how ridiculous it is. I'm definitely having one of those moments about this beater. Oh, someone's saying that they, uh, they made poop emoji floating whips. Uh, soap that they piped out for their kids. My kids would think that's like the best thing ever. They'd be like, oh my god. But they also, I, I said it at the beginning, I made these like tiny mini bars of soap because they also will keep the soap in the bath with them until the entire bar is melted. So, it, I don't know if I care enough about amusing my children to make them like mini Hershey's sized poop, poop soaps. Maybe when they're older, they can appreciate the humor of it a bit better. Frog emoji. Yep. Frog emoji? Yeah. Okay. Frog emoji. Frog emoji. Frog oh, that's right. That is a frog emoji. Leah's a frog emoji. Okay, so this is done. So I'm going to show you guys. Look at that. Looks pretty good, huh? Goes from, from poison soap down into something actually usable and doesn't look too bad. Ooh, that I might have it. Yeah, it looks pretty good, huh? Okay, I'm just gonna move this down. Um, I, d I didn't find the stuff too badly to work with last time. So I got my molds here. I don't know. Just trying to get an angle on this camera here so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, yeah, so I found that other than it kind of like stuck together, like so it was, it was hard to scoop in. You know, like like cake batter. I found that it uh, that it went into the things pretty good. I think someone just asked like how long I anticipate the soap to last, and honestly, at this point, I have like a hundred bars of soap, <laughs> so a lifetime. <laughs> uh, just because it's uh, that's a lot of soap. I need to find a way to get rid of it. 
But like, so these, I have this container of mini bars here and these, like, I, I cut them up into these tiny pieces because my kids love to have a bar of soap in the bath the entire time, but they will melt an entire bar of soap. So I made all these mini soaps for them so I could, I could uh, sucker them into taking baths. I don't know if you can kind of see what a mess I'm making here, but this, like, the batter is, like, it's working pretty good. Kind of like, it's like muffin batter. Let's see if I can flop it. So you can see it kind of, or like a really thin taffy almost is like the consistency of it. Um, yeah, other than the fact that it, it doesn't go, and you can't like tap this down super well to make like a nice clean top. Um, and like I found when I used it, these molds before, I had like a ton of air bubbles, but you know, it's, I think they're pretty, I think, like it works out okay. I don't really care what the back looks like, but I was like really, you know, these are for me. I'm not like selling them or anything. So if these, if I wanted these to look a little bit nicer, I'd maybe, I could, so here it is like with the top, you can see is kind of lumpy. If I wanted, I could just slice this to have like a nice, clean finish on it. Um, you know, I can kind of try to flatten it off like a bit here, but even then it doesn't, it doesn't really do what I want it to do. You know, like, like a taffy kind of idea, if anyone, I guess people don't necessarily make taffy. <laughs> Maybe it's more likely to make soap than making taffy. Um, it smells really good. The orange smells really nice. I do like that orange oil. It's nice and affordable too. But it does not like lasting through the cold process. Yeah, someone's saying if I chopped off the top I could make more mini bars for the kids. That's that's I mean that's like the one thing if you like do any of that like cleaning up stuff. It's still soap, right? It's like when you're down to like the last bit of the bar of soap. It's not like garbage. It's just, you know, maybe doesn't look as good, but... Mommy! Yes? I love you. I love you too. I'm gonna say that more. You miss daddy? Yeah. What do you think about soap, Leah? Do you like soap? Yeah! Yeah, you like it that mommy's making soap? Yeah. Leah helps me design lots of my soaps, right? You tell me how I should make it, right? You want a house, snowflake house soap. Yeah. Yep, and that's why Leah's not allowed to go shopping on Amazon for soap molds. You'd buy a new soap mold for every mold, for every every soap, wouldn't you? Not right now, guys. I'm not a big girl. Yeah, because you're not a big girl. That's right. You have to make some money. Yeah. You, have, you have to go to work if you want to buy all the stuff. Yeah, so this so this started out as at as two pounds of soap, and these I found when I do a three pound batch of soap with these molds, it makes about this is like twelve of these, and it makes about fifteen of these parts. So, like doing the two pounds and then whipping it up, like I already have twelve here, and that used probably like three-fifths of the soap batter. Like, I still have a lot of batter here. Um, I'm gonna try hitting this down a little bit to try to get it to sit into the surface of the, the details. That you can kind of see here, this is like the mold. They have these like little pieces that are three-dimensional, but it didn't really sit into that super well, so. You know, it's just, it's, it's so fluffy that to get it to sit nicely into these, it was easier said than done, but I don't know. I, I think they look okay. This I think is definitely more liquidy than last time. Um, but oh, I, like I said, I cooked it for almost three hours last time. So, okay, Leah, I have to steal one of these. No, no. Okay. 
I'm sorry, I have to. Hey! Leah's using my, I have these mini soap molds. She likes to put her little animals inside of them. We have a boat. It's a boat? Yeah. Well, why don't you get a Tupperware to be a boat? No. I'm sorry, Leah, but I need it. I'm going to make you these fancy soaps. This is gonna be no. I need that one next. No, Leah, I'm gonna need it right away. Okay. I don't know if these small molds are actually gonna work out because there's so much detail on them and they're so small that it's hard to get it into all the crevices. Leah, listen, I'm gonna need that right away. Okay, I'm gonna need it in like one minute. So for unmolding the soap, because obviously we're not going to stick around for three days well, <laughs> well this dried up, um, on the batch that I did last time it only took a day before it was like firm enough. Um, basically like if I didn't, if I hadn't have whipped it and then added so much liquid into it, this kind of soap, there's a good chance that you can unmold it after you know, a, a pretty short amount of time, like, you know, like a couple hours, kind of the same idea as like a melt and pour type soap. You just have to wait for it to cool down. Um, but there's so much liquid in this from me being slightly paranoid about the lye and then it just from me wanting it to be so workable that my guess is I'm probably going to need three days on this one. Um, and then... And then, like I said, that other one, it was just a little bit thicker. It only needed about two days in the mold. Um, but, yeah. Like, it, it's surprising how much it firms up once the, the temperature kind of cools down. Okay, this is a super big mess, but I'm not going to clean it off. Because I'm hoping to actually... Get it to sit in there a bit. These might look cool to to have like a bit of uh, design to it. So there, big mess. You can see how much it's mounding. Oh hey Leah. Okay, I need all this. Can, can you go talk to your brother? Cause I'm almost done. I'm running out of time. The baby's waking up. Okay, and then I'm just. This is my loaf mold. And then I'm just going to take this and just pour what's left in here into the loaf mold. Um, just, that wake up. I know he wants to wake up. Can you just hang out with him for a minute while I do this? Yeah. Sending my toddler on babysitting duty. My son has been waking up very crabby from his naps lately. But he's obsessed with his sister, so that should buy me the couple minutes I need to do this. Yeah, it's definitely, it's already kind of thickening at this point. And then it looks like there's some bits that weren't fully whipped kind of in the crevices of the crock pot that's mixed in with this. We'll call it marbling. It's a design feature. And then just kind of stab it into the into the corners of the mold to try to get it to sit in there a bit. My kids are going to be stoked for a bath because I'm going to give them these. <laughs> you like the way that you give like kids like a beater to like lick after you like make whipping cream? I'll give them beaters to have soap in the bath. I know I'm almost done. Okay, I'm just gonna. Oh! Hopefully not flick this everywhere. And then I'll show you guys what this looks like. And then I gotta go here. But thank you so much for hanging out for an hour and 15 minutes while I rebatch soap. Um, yeah, if you, if you have any questions or especially if you have any tips about uh, what you think I did wrong here on the original soap, definitely let me uh, know below. But... I mean, I'd say my takeaway on the rebatching is it works well, but it's it's time consuming. And it also, you know, like all the soap 
making is kind of time consuming. You can kind of see uh, the thing there. Yeah, all the soap is kind of time consuming, but I don't know if this look is worth the amount of time it makes, but it can make a really nice soap because you can have it with the scent and the oils and the stuff that is harder to kind of get the right balance of on uh, on the cold process soap. So, you know, because of that, I'm excited for experimenting with the hot process. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's my takeaway. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go deal with my whiny baby. Okay, so I will see you guys again. I will be here this time again next week, uh, but I won't be doing so. I'll, I'll probably be doing like starts or something for my, my next week live thing. I just needed to get the soap done, so thought I'd do it with you guys. <laughs> but yeah, so have a good day. Thank you so much for joining me and uh, make sure to give me a thumbs up on the video. It, it helps me for getting it to give a little bit of a boost I off after apple. I I post it for the, like the- I did the that apple. Oh, thank you. Okay, see you guys. Hey, have a good day. This is the awkward part where, okay, okay, I figured it out. Okay, see you guys.